Hey everybody, this is Eric at Code EM. Today's video will be on how to set up master-to-master -master communication between two or more AMX processors. The video is actually going to be in two parts. First video will be on setting up the masters so that the communication is established. And the second video will be on how to write code to speak to the different masters on the system. All right, let's get started. For today's exercise, I've set up two Netlinks processors. The first one is an NX3200, and I've given it a system ID of 1, and the second is an NI700, and I've given it a system ID of 2. Today's exercise will set up master-to-master -master communication between these two by setting up the URL on System 2. Let's get started. To set up master-to-master -master communication on a Netlinx processor, you can use a variety of methods. I happen to like to use Netlinx Diagnostic. It's a simple little utility, it has all the things you need, and the GUI is easy to work your way around on. Uh, you can also do it from Telnet if you like to do it that way. You can also do it from Netlink Studio. These same tools are available in Netlink Studio. However you like to do it, doesn't matter. It all works. Just so you know, the two masters that we'll be working with are on my network. Uh, master system ID number one is at IP address 192.168.205.21. And master number two, the NI700, is at 192.168.205.61. We'll begin the process by logging in to master number two, the one that's going to be pointing at master number one. We'll log in and set it up. So I'll connect to the master. Now we're connected, and just to show you, uh, that this is indeed a system number two, and it's an NI700. The way we set up the master-to-master -master communication is very simple. You go to the tab listed URL list. First thing you'll want to do is probably get the URL list by clicking the button. Here again in the Telnet session, you can use the get URL command. As you can see by clicking this, there are no URLs listed. It doesn't populate. That means the master's not talking to anybody. It's just sitting by itself. So to begin the communication, it's really simple. You just add, click the add button, type in the URL of the master you want to talk to. And in this case, as I said, it's .21. Uh, if the master is uh, password protected, you can enter in the password and username here and you can, you'll do that by checking the authentication required. This allows you to keep the system secure if you happen to need to do that. All right, so we can hit the OK button. Right now, the master is running out and looking for the other master, and it won't, it takes a while for it to update, but what you can do to kind of hurry the process is just hit the Get URL button again. And as you see, it's now connected. It's showing the status is connected. That's it. You can connect this to other masters if you wish. Uh, you can start sort of a star topography if you want to. The one thing you want to be very careful to avoid is keep in mind that this connection is two-way. I don't need to go to system one and connect back to system two. If you make that mistake, you'll find that you basically create a command storm because master two will tell master one that something happened and then master one will dutifully run back and tell master two that something happened and it'll just sit there bouncing back and forth and it'll bring your processors down that's it we now have our master to master con connection set up let's play with it a little bit all right bear in mind while we're doing this experiment that this instance of netlinks diagnostic is currently connected to our system id number two which is a Netlinx uh, um, NI700. You can see it right here, it's an NI700. Normally you'd use Netlinx Diagnostic to control and operate different devices connected to the NI700. For example, you can flash the IR ports or you can send serial strings to things, so on and so forth. But what we're going to do now that we have master to master connected up, we're going to actually operate some of the parts and pieces of the other masters on the system. Now the NI700 that we're connected to right here is not in my office, it's elsewhere on the facility. But what I've done is I have set up the NX3200 here in my office and I've put a network camera pointing to it so that you can see what happens. The image is a little blurry, but you don't really need to see it. You'll get the point when you see what we're doing. Now what I'm going to do here again while connected to the NI700 
is I'm going to go to control a device and I'm going to try to turn on one of the relays over here on the NX3200. Now the device for the NX3200 is 5001 and the, I'm going to turn on the relays and the relays on the, uh, the NX3200 happen to be on port 21. Now bear in mind currently we're connected to system 2 but the, the one I want to control is on system 1. If we were connected to other systems like system 3, system 4, system 5, you'd put whatever system ID is in here. We're happened, we happen to be doing 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try to turn on relay 1. Now this won't be instantaneous because the camera has a 3 second refresh rate, but trust me it's happening the instant I hit the button. So what I'm going to do is try to turn on relay 1. And there it is. It actually happened the instant I clicked the button, but the camera takes a few seconds to refresh. And here again I can turn it off. Here again it turned off instantly, the camera took a few seconds to refresh. I can do the same thing with, you know, Relay 2. I'll turn Relay 2 on. And let's turn on Relay 4, I guess. And we'll turn Relay 4. So as you can see, we're able to control those devices over on that NX3200. Similarly, I could uh, watch for I.O. change, uh, state changes. I could send and receive serial strings from it. Uh, that would all just depend on what I wrote into the code. Anyway, that's the basic steps on setting up master to master. Here again, the key points are make a one connection that is two-way. Don't make connections backwards because you're basically creating a loop. And the other is keep track of your system IDs and that will help you with your coding. Now to see how we can utilize this master to master feature in code, make sure you check out the second video of the series, Writing Code for Master to Master Communication. Thanks everybody.